I'm Becca. This is Glenn, Lily, Weeing, and Sebi. In the summer of 2013, I went through the chandelier drive through tree in the town of Leggett, California for the first time and came back with this souvenir hat. When people asked me about my hat, I realized I'd only driven through. So I decided to go back with my friends and make a documentary about the tiny town with the drive through tree. Cool. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> I'm Meredith from Massachusetts. David Edmonds from Orville, California. I'm Alex, I'm from Spain. Well, I'm Julia, I'm from Germany. I'm Jesse Cassidy, I am uh, traveling the country. Uh, I just packed up my life one day and started hitting the road. We were coming up Route 1 and getting on 101 and there were some signs and we were like, oh, is that around here? <laughs> yeah, it looked fun so we thought, why not? We usually try to come through here once a year. <laughs> we love the tree. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid, growing up, running around here, the whole place is different memories of my grandparents, my great-grandparents. I can still remember my, my great-grandfather sitting at the gate at the top of the hill, collecting tickets, you know, and, and talking to the folks. My name's Tom Stevenson. I'm the great-grandson of Charles and Hazel Underwood, uh, who came to this place at about 1922. They came out here following the lumber industry, which supplied uh, the city of San Francisco with lumber to build the city. At that time, it was about a four-hour trip between Eureka and Leggett, and they would come down here you know, on the weekends and stuff, and they, they kind of fell in love with the place, and they saved their money and bought the land. The history in this area isn't really talked about that much in the museum, so it was mostly verbal. Uh, not much documentation on what really went on in this area. Uh, the hole was actually cut in the drive through tree, oh, mid-1930s. Some folks had a car and they tried to pull the U-Haul trailer in behind them and they got stuck in the tree. So we had to get the tractor out and pull them out from the other side. That was probably the craziest thing I'd seen. <laughs> Uh, a couple of few years ago, we came, and my cousin Jason he put his suburban in front, you know, going through the front, and it didn't work out. So the mirrors were going to hit, so he backed it up. A lot easier, simple, and safer. I uh, used my friend's car to drive up here because it's uh, electric, and I don't want to be the one that knocks the windows off the side of it or something like that. We'd be in the car in the back seat. Grandma, drive through the tree, and she'd drive through the tree, and my dad would say. She'd drive through the tree at 15 miles an hour. She didn't care, but she's gonna put it through that tree. And she, every day she came to work, she had to drive through the tree. I don't, I don't look at it as our tree. Uh, we're just the caretakers. We're the caretakers for the next generation. You know, it's a pretty unique place, and it's very special to me and, uh, and our family, too. Nos tomamos fotos con la familia y pues mucha gente no conoce este lugar y lo podemos subir al internet y ahí se, se, se fijan la, lo, lo bonito que está pues también. It's beautiful up here it's and cool. very peaceful, yes. Yeah, forgetting about work a little bit, it's good. It's just kind of disconnecting, it's really fun up here. We're not particularly religious people, but I think this is as close to church as we get. Yeah, I always, I always say, you know, my, my temple is the woods. It's a I don't know how to say it. It's just, it's a small piece of, of the earth that you can't find any other place really, you know? I don't know, just being out in the woods, each day's different here. There's so many things to look at, just hiking around in the woods is what I like doing. Growing up, you know, I thought every place was like this and you get out of here and there's nothing like it. You know, it just goes to show that like, there are such close memory associations for these tiny little places that you really just wouldn't expect it to mean that much to anybody, and then it does. For most people, this is just a passing through space. And I guess the deeper why is 
if you know all this is the best thing in the world, why wouldn't you want to stay? Even though we've been in Minnesota, you know, there are generations of us that have been out here now to see this tree, and we tend to believe that trees have spirits, and so we're kind of expecting to feel a little bit from the tree, too. The redwoods are magical, though. It's, uh, it's something that everyone should probably experience. These trees have been around long before we were here, and they'll be around long after, so it's I good to check out. I think that's part of the awe-inspiring part, is how much of a blip you really are in the life of these trees.